we upcycle, recreate um, home decor. So today we have a junk box challenge for you. Uh, is, that is where a customer donates a box full of random items around their house and challenges us to upcycle it, repurpose it, and make it fresh and new again. And today's box came from Tammy. So thank you, Tammy, for donating all of this fun stuff. And we're gonna go through it and show you some ideas that we have for it and what it might become through this process. And we kind of, when we start, we don't know exactly how it's gonna turn out. So we'll, we'll see as we progress here. So Angie, do you wanna talk about the first item that we have? Well, I, uh, I really like this. I grabbed it for, before Julie got it because I would like to, to do it. Um, we're going to paint this bread box um, and, um, with plastic color. i going to sand it down. And then we talked about maybe putting it on legs. Well, we have to find some legs. But it would be pretty cool. And then do a kind of in a French look and then have a sign put on here. About being bread. Yeah, being bread. French, or French, which I don't know what French is in bread. <laughs> I don't know. I know there's French bread. We might have to look it up or freshly baked or something. Ba yeah, maybe. Some, something cool. In something yeah. kitchen y. So, I don't know. <laughs> that's what we're going to do with that one. All right, so I have this fabric. I, I was elected to do this. <laughs> She no, tried to pass it off. No one else wanted to do it. Too this complicated. <laughs> but I thought it would be uh, make nice tea towels. It's kind of a, I don't know, but that's not a linen. It's kind of a linen. It's, linen. it's a thicker li linen. Um, so I'm going to make oversized tea towels and try to maybe put a grain sack stripe through, through it or make it, I don't know, maybe put a French stamp on it with, some IOD ink. I don't know. I, I have to kind of play with it and see how it one turns out and then do the rest if it turns out <laughs> yeah. like that. So we'll see. I'll, I can put show you up close. Oh, it's, 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 I would, it's really pretty, pretty linen. Um, and then it has a fray there. And what I'll probably end up doing is I probably won't fold my hem. I'll probably just stitch so it won't fray anymore. But I like that so fray there. there. Yeah, so. And we have this cool little pedestal that we're gonna, I think we're gonna paint it to match everything else. And then we're gonna maybe put a dowel on top and it'll be a nice place to put our strings that we use all the time in the shop here. And we probably will at the shop in Crosby. So that'll look real cool. Mm -hmm. Very nice. And then there's a, a basket, so when you're taking it, the bread from the bread box, you put it in the basket. <laughs> so we're going to paint the basket, and then we're going to put some trim around here, and maybe put a little sign on there. So mm -hmm. we're going to put some little cloth in there too, I guess. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Okay. You steal my cloth? <laughs> <laughs> you probably mean we stitch it then. You? <laughs> you know what would be cool, and I never thought of this until now, is taking some clay some clay oh, IOD yeah. and like stamping it and then putting the clay emblem that would be here. Cool. Let's do that. That would be kind of, kind of neat. Very nice. Yeah. Okay. And I have, so these kind of all go together. This is a shelf and I, I like the shapes of the shelf and the corbels. Um, what I'm going to do is an old, school glue method of crackling paint. So you you paint the school glue onto the piece and wait a little while until it's, the school glue is almost dry and then you paint over the school glue with whatever color you want and then that will give a crackle effect and that will just kind of freshen up these pieces. I like their function. I like that they're shelves and um, I like the shape of them, so I don't think we're going to change them, just the color, just to freshen it up. So. And the last but not least, we have a picture frame. And we're going to clean that all up, make it match everything else, and then we'll put some kind of maybe French bakery sign in there. Um, that'll look really nice with the whole ensemble. Yeah, ensemble. I think it's kind of a French country 
right now, I think it depends on how it turns out, but yep. I'm envisioning kind of a French country theme. Oui, oui, so. oui, oui. <laughs> Let's get started. Let's go. I was the one who worked on the oversized tea towels. I'm not sure what the fabric was used for. I'm thinking it was a project that never got done or maybe a tablecloth. I used my rotary cutter and my measuring mat. This just made it really easy to make sure all the towels were the same size. I got about six towels from this big piece of fabric. To get a clean line, I taped two towels at the same time with painter's tape onto my cutting mat. Using the measurements on the map helped me stay somewhat consistent with the thickness of my lines. To set the paint onto the fabric, I later ironed the towels. The heat just helps with adhesion, and I frayed the edges about a quarter of an inch and also stitched a single stitch along the edges just to keep it from fraying more. This was quite a time-consuming process, and I would be interested in doing this again, trying to make my own grain sack stamp using a rolling pin and layered rubber bands. There are different ideas on Pinterest that someone could experiment with if they wanted to. If any of you have done a grain sack stripe in a different way that worked well, let us know in the comments below. We would love to hear about what you've done. Julie and Angie wiped down all of the other items and cleaned up dust and grime. We have so much fun together and look forward to doing these junk box challenges. We talk, visit, laugh, and even as I was editing this video, I was laughing at our conversations. To finish the shelf and corbels, we used a school glue paint crackle method. You can use regular white or clear liquid school glue. Either one works. We painted a layer of glue onto each piece and waited for it to dry just until it was tacky. We then painted all the pieces with Waverly chalk paint. To get more of a crackle effect, Julie dried the pieces with a heat gun. The faster your pieces dry, the more crackles your paint will have. Once the paint is dry, we wax the pieces with a clear wax. Julie used the same color to paint the candle pedestal and the wooden frame. Angie painted the bread box in the same plaster color as well. Angie used graphite paper to trace some French words we printed off and went over the words with a paint pen. To make the string holder, I drilled the hole in the top of the candle pedestal and glued an old spindle from a crib onto the top. I also drilled a tiny hole in the top of the spindle to attach a knob to keep the string from coming off, and just for a cute little detail. We could have left the spindle a wood color, but we decided to paint it as well. Angie molded some clay into the shape of the stamp she decided to use. She decided to use the royal lemon curd stamp, which was fitting for the basket and our kitchen theme. We decided to leave the clay white, but if someone wanted the words to pop, you could apply a darker wax to highlight them. Angie used quick and thick glue to glue the clay to the basket. The beauty of this clay is that it doesn't have to dry in order to glue it to any surface, so it especially helps when you have a curved surface so the clay can mold into the shape you need. If you've enjoyed watching us so far, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. We would love to have you join us. Okay, so we are done with our projects for the day. It went pretty pretty well, pretty Very smoothly. Well. Yes. Um, and we kind of stuck with the same color palette, which made things probably go faster. And I love I love the color that we used. It's very Me neutral too. and goes with a lot of different things. Most of the items that we did today will be listed on our website under the junk box challenge. Yep, there's, there's one thing that we are keeping for the workshop 
or for the boutique, and that is this one. Yes. Yep. And we kind of it was kind of a team effort um, putting it together. Uh, Angie, do you want to show that up close? So we took the candle pedestal and put a wooden dowel through the middle and it holds a few um, different types of twine. And then we put a little hook on there to hook the scissors and it's just a really practical way to store our twine. So nice touch. Yes, we're keeping that one. Yes. And it's really cute. Yes. <laughs> um, and then I did the towels. So we'll start off with this. This was time consuming, that's why I got elected to do it, <laughs> um, but it, they turned out pretty cute. I still have some hemming to do on them and I'll just, I'll take my sewing machine out later and, and go along and do some stitching and, and fraying. But I used the tape as you saw um, and taped off some lines and they're, they're really pretty. So I like yeah, how they turned out. And then I also found these, I have these napkin rings, wooden napkin rings that I thought looked kind of cute to hang in the middle of the towel and then you can hook, use the napkin ring to hook on to a hook or something. So yeah, who wants to share next? Oh, okay. I'll just do my quick, um, painted up the frame and distressed it a little bit and got the wax on it and then had some really cool French wallpaper Amy had on hand and we just, um, put a stencil on there and, and, uh, Put the patisserie which is i believe french bakery <laughs> so yeah that's kind of cute and i did the basket and i did the little plaque out of o <laughs> i did the, the, the little plaque basket. on the iod's yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, stamp the clay. Stamp the clay. Yeah. yeah you can see how it turned out cute. So cute. Really cute. And then we painted the basket with the same white and then put a little bit of the napkin in there and then a little bit of color. Mm -hmm. Super cute. And then along with that, Angie did most of well, all of the... Bread box. bread box, yeah. Except I forgot to bake the bread. Uh oh, you'll have to do uh, that. To <laughs> Maybe some scones in there would be good. Ooh, yes. yes. So coming soon, we are going to be doing a, a video with making Angie's scones. So um, we have a little playlist in our YouTube on our YouTube channel called Traditions in the Kitchen, and so that will be in there soon. We'll do a little video of our homemade scones that we're hopefully going to serve in our bakery and coffee shop. So mm, yummy. Um, yes, and then Julie, you did most of the the corbels. Corbels, yes, they turned out pretty well. The glue. We put the coating of the glue on first, and then we dried that out just a little bit, let it dry, and then we put on the paint, the same paint as the rest of it, and then used the. Um, heating gun, the heat gun, to dry it, and then it gives us this beautiful crackly look. Mm -hmm. You waxed so. that too. Was... And then I waxed it, yes. And we waxed the board, uh, yep. breadboard carpet. Yes, so everything that you see today, the basket, we didn't wax, no. but everything else we used a clear uh, Waverly wax on. So yeah, very fun projects, um, very beautiful, yes. I think, yes. I love it. So. Well, thank you so much for watching today. We hope you had fun. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And if you'd like more Junkie and Adventures and to keep up to date on what we're doing and what we're up to, make sure to follow our Facebook page and also our Instagram page. We'd love to have you join us and our family there. And then we also um, have a website where you can shop all of our upcycled um, decor and fun finds at beautifulsalvage.com. Thank you so much for watching. Have a beautiful day. Bye.